Hey everyone, today's video is a little bit different than our usual adventures. We've been asked a lot about how to take your pet to Hawaii since bringing Spencer, our dog, in 2023 with us to stay for three months while we worked on the island of Maui. He's been to the beach like a couple of times before, I think on Cape Cod, but first beach in Hawaii for the Spencer. San Diego. Oh, you went to San Diego too, you're right. So in this video, we're going to talk all about the checklist that you have to complete for direct airport release. That's correct. Your pet does not have to stay overnight quarantined if you follow these steps exactly as outlined. So to make this confusing and slightly stressful process a little easier, let's jump right in. Step one, planning. To begin the process, the very first thing you need to do is go to hawaii.gov. On this website, you can download and print out the checklist that you will need to complete each step. There are actually two checklists. Checklist one is to get to Oahu, and this is the easier of the two. This is the one that we did despite going to Maui. And once you're on the island, you can do inter-island flights without doing additional steps. However, if you wanna fly direct to one of the other islands, you need checklist two. Checklist two covers Kona, Kahului, and Lihu. For those airlines, you will need a separate step involved and it is more time consuming, hence why we flew straight to Oahu and went from there. Easy, bud. Overall, we found Oahu simpler because it was straightforward and less steps. The first thing you need to do is figure out where you're flying and pick the correct checklist. I also wanna point out that the most important thing to remember with all of this is to take it seriously and have these all completed before you fly to Hawaii. There is no leniency. As they state in step one, every dog or cat must meet all requirements of the checklist and have the documents turned in at least 10 days before arrival if you want direct airport release. Step two, microchipping. This step is pretty straightforward and easy to do. They have to be microchipped. It's very easy to follow. You go to the vet and get it done if they're not already. There's really only two things about the microchip that you wanna make sure you understand. First off, it has to be implanted before you can even have the Favin rabies antibody blood test performed. The second most important thing is just make sure it is working. It has to be able to be read for direct airport release. That means good working order. Step three, rabies vaccinations. They're very specific on this and they state, your pet must be vaccinated at least twice for rabies within their lifetime. There is no exceptions. While they basically outline exactly how they want the rabies vaccination to be completed, from what I can tell, it's basically the same as if you just have your pet vaccinated to make sure they don't have rabies. It's the standard protocol. They do outline some additional steps. These have to be at least 30 days apart. And lastly, the most recent rabies vaccine must be administered more than 30 days before your pet's arrival to Hawaii. Surprisingly, we actually had an issue with this section due to being travel healthcare workers and our pet visiting vets all over the country. For us, when they stated not more than the vaccine's licensed booster interval, we had actually missed one of his rabies vaccines by three weeks, which meant he was overdue this was going to directly impact us from getting to Hawaii because we were outside the manufactured window of when they recommend to get vaccinated. Luckily, we were able to get him an additional booster, which allowed him to have two vaccines within the required time frame they are asking for. We were cutting it close and it was a little stressful. There is one more very important part of step three I want to talk about. And that is that you need the official certificates for every rabies vaccine, at least the two that you are using, with the date, the type of vaccine, and the veterinarian signature. This part is also a challenge if you just have copies that have an e-signature. This section we'll talk about a little more under the documents. However, I will touch on it briefly here. They want the original two certificates, for two rabies vaccinations that have to be signed in ink by a licensed veterinarian. The two rabies vaccine certificates must have the vaccine name, the lot number or serial number, the booster interval, the vaccination date, and the vaccination lot expiration date listed. It sounds confusing, but honestly, everything on the actual vaccine paperwork from your vet, at least for ours, was pretty much identical. 
The only hard part is I had to call the vet and actually get them to send me or mail me in my current address a hard copy with their signature. We have been asked as well, well, how strict are they on this requirement? And honestly, I don't know. I made copies of each. I had sent in the originals and I kept one for me. Um, it was challenging to get those copies with signatures, but we actually pursued it and called several times to the vets to make sure we had them in time because I didn't want to chance it. Step four, let's talk about the Fabin test. This is probably going to be one of the most time consuming processes in the entire checklist. It's pretty easy to do. It's just blood work that your vet has to draw. However, it can take a while for the testing center to complete it. I would recommend starting this immediately by calling your vet and getting a scheduled appointment to have the Fabin test drawn and taken. There are several places it can be read listed on their website. However, ours was sent to Kansas State University. There is a time limit on this test though, as well with everything else you have to complete. This test cannot be done three years before you go to Hawaii or 36 months, but it also can't be less than 30 days. Honestly, I don't think you'll have much issue with that because not many people plan that far out. And for the 30 day aspect, it can usually take at least 30 days for this test to be read back. So you should not really be in much of an issue there. Since ours was sent to Kansas State University, I'll give you an example. Their turnaround time was seven to eight weeks for some reason when we had done this. Right now on their website, it lists about three to four weeks. That is pretty quick compared to ours. But again, if you're on a time crunch, that's a month of your time taken up. There is a little bit more on this test I'm going to talk about. It states on the checklist, obtain a copy of this successful blood test result from your veterinarian showing the pet's microchip number for your records. And they even state on the Hawaii checklist, don't contact the lab directly. I'm going to tell you right now, not only did we not get a copy of this test, I contacted them directly. <laughs> Our test was running late and we were a little nervous about making it in time. So I actually called a few times to see if I can get an update and no, they don't tell you if you passed or not. However, I was able to clarify, at least when we were doing this, they were sending electronic copies to Hawaii and informed us we did not need to have in hand passing results. Once I confirmed that the results were sent to Hawaii from Kansas State University, I was able to get a hold of Hawaii directly and see if they had actually passed. They were able to clarify via phone for me and that took care of it. I'm gonna end this section with another story because we get a lot of questions about leniency. When we got there as a traveling healthcare worker at the hospital we were working at, we met other travel nurses. That nurse shared a story about quarantine because we brought our dog Spencer and she brought her two small dogs, a Chihuahua and a Yorkie. Now she had passed everything she told us except the Fabin blood work. You wanna go down buddy, come here. Oh. She had passed everything, but the Fabin blood work was not in. However, she was anticipating it in a day or two. So she flew to Hawaii, hoping it would arrive in a day or so, and then her dogs would be let go. Unfortunately, one passed and one didn't. So for her, her small Yorkie had to be quarantined and she had to call a vet to find out if they could do another rabies vaccination and then a Fabin test after that. Now, I just told you the Fabin test takes at least three to four weeks. So if that vet took a few days to get there, she's looking at another month before she can pick up her dog. I don't know what options she had and we weren't able to follow up because we did not see her again at that hospital for me to ask. But talk about a stressful day for her and really sad that she could not pick up her dog. Don't let that happen to you. Make sure everything's done before you go. Step five is the waiting period. And I'm gonna read some of these off for you. Following the successful Fab and Rabies antibody test results, animals have to wait 30 days before they can arrive in Hawaii. Like I said, the test takes three to four weeks. This should not be an issue. Basically get the test done whenever the lab receives your test and starts processing it, this is the beginning of your 30 day waiting period. As long as you don't get your pet to Hawaii before 30 days from that date, you're fine. You obviously have to have everything else in place. There's a few other things listed here, like what is the actual passing results score? And they talk about how much it'll cost if they have to quarantine your pet. I'm not gonna go over that because it's very easy to read. So we're gonna go on to section six, the documents required for direct airport release. 
After all the steps we just covered, there's more paperwork. This one I honestly thought was pretty simple. You have to print out the dog and cat import form, AQS279, and it's listed right on their checklist. This is easy to find by Googling it and printing it. It's a very basic form, and it needs to be filled out as accurately as possible. While they ask for specific dates regarding when you're going to arrive in Hawaii, we got ours wrong. We got it wrong by a few days because we had to change our flight so we could get our dog there after his testing. So if you end up filling it out and it's slightly off, you can call Hawaii and just ask them and it should be fine. At least that's how it was for us. What I will say though is try to fill out as accurately as possible and they outline the cost of everything and expectations. Aside from the AQS form, this is where I mentioned the rabies vaccinations that have to be signed by a licensed veterinarian. The two rabies certificates, again, have to have all the things listed, the name, the number, the booster interval, the vaccination date, and then again, signed. Make sure it's signed. I can't go over that enough. The next thing is an original health certificate in English, 14 days before you fly, must be completed. Now, I know there's a lot of dates being thrown around, and honestly, it seems kind of confusing. But if you follow the checklist or break this video up into segments and follow it, it should be pretty straightforward. This vet appointment is basically when your vet does a look over of your pet, does their health certificate, checks all the boxes. For us, it was an online completion form that our vet was familiar with. They also have to do a bunch of filling out paperwork. They want to review the rabies vaccinations. It's just like a checklist for them on top of everything you just did. That vet also must treat your pet for ticks, regardless if you're already giving them tick medication they have to do some long acting product to kill them. And they even specify on their site what is not acceptable and what time frame they have to give it. Whew, okay, step seven, actually submitting the documents. If you're getting a little tired, stressed, or frustrated, I am too, because this is a lot of paperwork. So bear with me, let's finish this off because at this point you're getting through most of it and we are almost there. Hawaii wants you to send your documents in at least 10 days before you arrive in Hawaii. They provide the address on the checklist and due to our limited time, we actually sent ours via overnight carrier with tracking to ensure they were received in time. I'm not gonna lie, ours were received eight days before. I know that exactly because it was tracked. We are, we're fully aware at this point that we may get declined and our dog would not be able to go to Hawaii. The reason we did it so late is because we did not have confirmation that his actual rabies blood work was done until the day before we were about to fly. And we were hesitant to send all our documents because we didn't want to pay all the fees and then not bring him anyways. I would highly recommend sending all your documents in early. They state on this form and checklist that you are not given priority if you're below the 10 days. So there was a chance that he was still gonna get denied. Aside from sending it in late and being uncertain if they would receive them in time, there are additional fees as well. We were still allowed direct airport release, but we did have to pay the $244 listed instead of the 185 for the standard processing. This is clarified more on the dog and cat import form that we covered a little earlier. Now, like I said earlier, owners wishing to fly their pet to somewhere other than Oahu, you have two options. I'm gonna talk briefly on them and then you can decide what's right for you. One option is going to Oahu like we did. Once they clear quarantine, you can get on a neighboring flight and go to any of the other islands whenever you want without doing any of the quarantine process again. However, if you choose the big island of Hawaii, Maui or Kauai, for direct airport release, you have to send in your documents 30 days ahead of time with the passing Favin test all before you arrive and get a neighbor island inspection permit. This is the extra step that I was talking about. And for us, it just didn't make sense because of the time schedule. So this added uh, permit would not have worked for us. So we chose Oahu, cleared Spencer, and then just flew to Maui afterwards. It was very easy. If you decide to do those other locations first with a direct flight from the mainland, you need checklist two. Okay, we are gonna sum up section eight and I think we're pretty much done. 
Basically, there's a few things we want to cover in section eight, just so you're aware of what else needs to happen. If you're flying anywhere on the mainland and you've already flown with your dog, you know how the process works. You either book it online and choose with a pet, and sometimes you have to call and make sure you're confirming their space for your animal. To Hawaii is a little different. We booked with United. They allow pets in the cabin for everywhere else, but for specifically Hawaii, we found out they do not. I don't know if that's just a restriction they have because you have to do all these other steps for Hawaii. So we had to cancel that flight. We booked with Alaska Air and they do allow small dogs in the cabin. So that was the airline that we chose. And if you're gonna do a small dog, I would definitely look into that. If you're doing a larger dog, I'm assuming the other flights would be fine, but this is something you definitely need to consider looking into. Regardless or not of whether your dog's in the cabin or underneath, once you get to Hawaii, here's what happens. You're in the flight and you get off, and those of us with small dogs are all met in one area with an airport personnel who then walks us with our dogs and the owners of the big dogs to a quarantine location, which is at the airport itself. Anyone who has a big dog that's being shipped in a crate, that dog is transported for you to the quarantine section. And those with small dogs, you get to carry your dog. And this is the last part you see them before you have to go into the building, drop them off, and they were brought behind a locked door for quarantine. At this section, it's the most stressful because you made it all the way here to the island. You finally have to give them your dog for inspection and you just wait with all your paperwork with whoever else is there. So let's get back to the facts real quick. The inspection hours, which is listed on the checklist here, list 8 to 4.30 p.m. Now, you need to pick your flight very seriously because if you get there after inspection hours, they will hold your dog overnight and you have to pick them up the next day. If you have a delay in your flight, I'm sure something similar would happen. So make sure your flight falls within those hours so you're able to handle all of this on the same day. I would definitely review this section further to make sure everything's accounted for. Lastly, on that section, they list a lot of other things. What happens if your dog is kept overnight? What are the costs? It lists everything including the higher fee like we had to pay. It lists a few other things as well. I would read this section very thoroughly, make sure you understand it, but there's nothing I can really comment on there because it's all just time frames that you have to meet. If you've done everything else up to this point, this is just where the planning takes place and you have to make sure you meet their other time requirements. On the last page here, you'll see they list one last thing, the pet owner. It is your responsibility to arrange for transportation to or from the quarantine facility if your dog will be staying or picked up. Uh, you have to be listed on the dog and cat import form so you can pick up the dog. And if for some reason you're not the one actually arriving there, they do outline who and how someone else could pick up your dog for you. So into the story, after doing all of this, we waited for about an hour with eight other people in line. We finally got called in and they looked at all our paperwork for about 10 seconds and they said, okay, everything's in line. They already reviewed it when we were outside waiting. They checked our dog over for ticks or anything like that and made sure he's healthy looking. And they looked at our certificate and said, quote, okay, looks good. They carried him out of the back room in his little carrier and off we went. Spencer was officially in Hawaii. I'm not gonna lie, there was a huge sigh of relief and stress gone. This was one of the trickiest and scariest things for us to navigate on all of our travels because if you fail, I don't know what happens. I don't know if they're quarantined. I don't know if you can pick them up and fly home, but we didn't wanna deal with that. So follow the steps correctly if you don't want to either. Hopefully this was informative and I will try to break it up into sections on the timeline so you can click each one and complete them. If you have any questions about getting your pet to Hawaii, please feel free to leave us a comment below or you can check out our email down below and send us an email about it. We'd be happy to help in any way we can. The links for any of the things we talked about, including the, pet, uh, the dog and cat form, the actual checklist, uh, will all be linked below. I will even link checklist two, even though we did not talk about that one, that way you have easy access. 